Should you use a single-ended or a differential probe? The answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. Stay tuned to see why more and more engineers are using differential probes for everyday measurements. What is a differential probe? It's a probe specifically designed to make differential measurements. Why would you want to use a differential probe? The obvious answer is to measure differential signals. High-speed digital designers certainly have a differential probe or two on their bench, but there's a good chance every digital design engineer could benefit from a differential probe. Let's start with some fundamentals. What exactly is a differential measurement? A differential measurement is simply measuring the voltage difference between two points. If you think about it, really all voltage measurements are differential measurements. It's important to understand that some measurement tools like this DMM make floating measurements, so you can use these two probes to measure any two points on your board. But oscilloscopes are not floating. They are inherently ground referenced, so they force you to make measurements with respect to ground. So then how do you make a differential measurement with a scope? There's two options. One, you can use two single-ended probes, ground both of them, and then use your oscilloscope's built-in math function to find the difference between the two signals. This is the old school method. It works in a pinch, but you lose accuracy. The second option is to use a differential probe. More and more engineers are turning to differential probes. They may cost more upfront, but this quickly pays off with greater accuracy and ease of use. Let's look at an example. I've got a test board here with a USB device plugged in. Let's see how we can use those two methods to measure the differential USB signal on this board. First, let's use the old school method. Two single-ended probes, each connected to one signal and then grounded. Now you can see on screen that we have one of the signals on channel one and the other on channel two. Now we can set up a math function subtraction to find the difference between these two signals. So we can see that the purple trace here in the middle is channel one minus channel two. So I'm gonna save it as a reference waveform real quick so we can compare it to our differential probe. I've unplugged the two single-ended probes from channel one and two and plugged in our differential probe into channel one. Now I'm gonna hook up the differential probe to the same USB test board we used before. This way we can compare it to what we got with the two single-ended probes in the math function. So I've attached one pin on the differential probe to one signal and the other pin to the other signal. And on screen, we're automatically seeing the difference between these two signals. You'll also notice that on channel one with our differential probe, we're getting a much cleaner signal than with the first method because the differential probe is rejecting more of the common mode noise. So we're just seeing the differential mode. Now let's talk about exactly why the differential probe is giving us more measurement accuracy. There's three key advantages. First, we're able to maintain high common mode rejection. This essentially helps transfer that differential signal more accurately because the common mode noise is removed. The true differential signal is extracted so we can see a more accurate view of the signal on screen. Second, probe loading is significantly reduced. Usually it's half that of an equivalent single-ended probe. Third, differential probes have much higher bandwidth in the range of 30 gigahertz, while single-ended probes usually max out around two gigahertz. And even better, there's no ground bounce effect with a differential probe, meaning you don't have to worry about grounding your probe. You may know that with a single-ended probe, it's really important to keep the ground lead length as short as possible, otherwise you may lose bandwidth. But this is really challenging in practice, and is one of the reasons why engineers are turning to differential probes because there's no grounding required. The main disadvantage of a differential probe is cost. They are generally going to run more than single-ended probes. But the thing to keep in mind here is, with a higher cost, you're getting a significant performance advantage for measuring differential signals. But you can also measure single-ended signals with your differential probe. Simply connect one probe lead to your signal and one to ground, and you can take advantage of that performance boost of your differential probe. Regardless of the type of signal you're measuring, differential probes are great to keep in mind if you're looking for increased performance and ease of use. Instead of just using differential probes for specialized testing, it's helpful to think of differential probes as a general purpose tool that will be helpful for whatever testing you're doing in your lab. To learn more about oscilloscope probing, download the free probe training kit that's linked in the description and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Allie with Keysight Technologies and I'll see you next time.